In the 1930s, Warsaw was a rich and elegant city. Modern architecture, vibrant streets exuding a scent of luxury, were the trademark of the capital of Poland. A country that had just regained its independence. The Warsaw of its 1930s heyday was lost when the city was almost erased from the map of Europe at the end of the Last World War. Ninety percent of the buildings in Warsaw were blown up and razed to the ground by the Nazi German occupiers. Streets that once bustled with life were lost in the shapeless ruins. That's a uh, sad heritage of the Polish experience of the Second World War, where the large part of our national heritage was destroyed or dispersed. We recognize the importance of protection and helping in protection of uh, national heritage, especially of those uh, people who are living in the area which is cradle of our own civilization. A strong-willed desire by the people to revive the country gave power to the goal of rebuilding Warsaw and other destroyed towns. This project became the inspiration to a whole generation of engineers, architects and conservation experts who joined forces with archaeologists to practice the art of sharing. Sharing knowledge and enthusiasm to rescue the most precious art objects of the past from many places on the planet. After the war, one of the first Polish missions was led by a prominent archaeologist from Warsaw. Person Michalowski was a pioneer on the Polish ground of uh, active archaeological research in the eastern part of the Mediterranean. He wanted to be a field archaeologist, and even more, he considered that uh, the fact that the Poland, which after the First World War just uh, regained back its independence, needs to be present in the field of uh, archaeology dealing with ancient civilizations. His best-known mission was to Nubia, the border area between Sudan and Egypt. A huge archaeological survey and salvage operation was conducted in the area that later was flooded by the waters of the Nile when the Aswan High Dam was built. Professor Michalowski's mission discovered a Christian cathedral and saved its priceless frescoes. Restored by Polish conservation specialists, they are now on display in the National Museums of Khartoum and Warsaw. The paintings were found by Professor Michalowski in Faras, in North Sudan, in the ruins of the 8th century Christian cathedral. They represent religious subjects, angels, saints, the Virgin Mary and Jesus Christ. When the frescoes arrived in Poland, they were subjected to an environment that was very different to the hot and dry conditions of the African desert. Poland, the climate is humid, and this may cause soluble salts to leach out of the frescoes. From time to time, the paintings have to undergo detailed inspection, and if necessary, a proper glue is applied to prevent detachment of the paint layer. During the last 50 years, archaeologists and conservators have unearthed cities and temples discovered palaces and examined ancient tombs. In Sudan, they took part in a major salvage operation when the government in Khartoum decided to build a dam at the fourth cataract of the Nile. Poles saved hundreds of precious art objects from being submerged. 
including engravings dating to prehistoric times when the Sahara was not a desert, but a green savanna populated by wildlife. Professor Michalowski was also involved as a UNESCO team leader in the Swedish-led project to rescue the great Abu Simbel temples of southern Egypt that otherwise would have been inundated by the rising waters behind the Aswan High Dam. The colossal statues were cut into pieces, moved 65 meters, and then reassembled above the waters of Lake Nasa, creating one of the most spectacular tourist attractions of Egypt. Five hundred kilometers down the Nile, Polish researchers are working at Deir el-Bahari. The mission to restore the temple of the Egyptian Queen Hatshepsut has been ongoing since the beginning of the 1960s, with great results. Using the most sophisticated laser technology, a team of archaeologists, architects and engineers have recently been able to produce a highly detailed three-dimensional map of the site, showing buildings, ramps, rooms, chambers and hallways, not only as they look now, after the reconstruction, but also as they looked in antiquity. In the Hatshepsut Temple complex, one can see the reconstruction of the east wall of the sanctuary of the pharaoh Totmes III. With this digital model, we can enter the Queen Hatshepsut Chapel of the Royal Cult. Another chapel of the Solar Cult is part of the digital tour. Six hundred kilometers north of Luxor, in Saqqara, near the capital city of Cairo, another team of Polish Egyptologists, led by Professor Karol Mislevitz, made the discovery of the extraordinary tomb of the vizier Merefnebef, who served pharaohs during the Sixth Dynasty period. It was believed that the souls of the dead came through this doorway to partake of the offerings left in the chapel by the living. The family and priests of the funerary cult laid these offerings on the table in front of the false door. Naturally, the food was later consumed by the priests, but even so, the soul was believed to have been nourished as well. In Lebanon and Syria, Polish archaeologists have worked for half a century. Excavating in the city of Palmyra, located in an ancient oasis, they discovered stone statues and mosaics. The excavations are now suspended, but will continue when political stability returns to the region. Solidness of the of the Polish archaeologists uh, and their uh, and their professionalism in doing what they do, what they do with with full engagement, I would say, even though everybody knows what is the difference in the budget between the uh, Polish mission and other missions from the West, for example. The next challenge to face Polish experts was in Cambodia. Angkor, the famous complex of ancient temples located in the heart of the Cambodian jungle, needed an immediate intervention in the late 90s. The country was in a state of collapse after the civil war, when about a million people were killed by the Khmer Rouge regime. Famous sites on the UNESCO list were in peril. The answer to the call for help with conservation and excavation has always been a trademark of Polish scientists. Polish archaeologists and conservators came to Cambodia right after the bloody war of 1979. That was a very hard time to come to Cambodia. Fields of landmines existed in the jungle. 
and Khmer Rouge partisans were still active in some places. But Polish scientists were not afraid to come to this war-torn country and provide help. In Angkor, Polish experts worked on two of the most prominent and most widely known temples, Angkor Wat and Bayon. The first team of Polish archaeologists who came after the war were able to make an evaluation of the condition of the site, but they also provided training for the local community of conservators who served as the first aid team for the monuments of Angkor and the Silver Pagoda in Phnom Penh. They also cooperated with Cambodian students and invited them to study in Poland. In South America, we focus our efforts in four countries, Peru, Bolivia, Chile and Ecuador. In the middle of the 19th century, Poles began taking part in the research and salvage of monuments of the New World. Teams of engineers, artists and scientists have undertaken archaeological expeditions in Bolivia and Peru, seeking sites that need protection. Our teams of archaeologists and conservators nowadays work in South America at several sites from the UNESCO list. For example, we do extensive work in Tiwanaku in Bolivia. Polish scientists are also present in El Sagrario in Quito in Ecuador, the site of the first UNESCO project in South America. Also very important is our work in Cusco, in Peru. At the ancient capital city of the Inca Empire, we do research in the monastery of Santo Domingo Coricancha. And this year we're starting work at Saxawoman. Our teams also work with Peruvian colleagues at the well-known site of Machu Picchu. A few years ago, we began a new direction of archaeological activity in South America, in Easter Island. We combine caving and exploration with classical archaeology. At this Chilean Pacific Island, designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Interdisciplinary research and matching archaeology with conservation is a trademark of Polish teams. Such work has been done today in Korykancha in Cusco. Researchers have carried out detailed laser scanning and digital modeling. The monastery is also home to the priceless paintings of Diego Quispe Tito. As a result of painstaking conservation work on two of his paintings by Anna Darentowicz Jarzeska, she was able to reveal secrets of the artist's painting techniques. The laser scanning technique successfully used at Korykancha were also applied at Machu Picchu, where Polish scientists were providing help to Peruvian experts. Distilled from millions of laser measurement points, researchers created the model that lets them take an incredible virtual tour around the site. The experience that Polish archaeologists and conservators gained while working all over the world also helped them to protect their own national heritage. From working with strong lasers to clean 16th century King Sigimunda's chapel, to protecting the old town of Krakow, Poland's cultural capital. They also saved the Teutonic Knights Castle in Malbork, the largest brick structure in Europe. They salvaged from flood and rising air humidity, Bilitska, the unique salt mine with historical sculptures made of salt crystals. And finally, they are applying their know-how 
to rebuilding Warsaw, restoring the city to the state of its glorious heyday.